welcome to Inner Voice of Knowing podcast. I'm Kay Doran, a shamanic leadership coach and healer, guiding you through life with a foot in both worlds. When you understand the terrain of the inner landscapes, the mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic, you will become the leader within your physical life, both personally and professionally. After all, the power of change is in your hands. Let's get this journey started. Welcome to Inner Voice of Knowing. How exciting. This is the 30th of December. So the last podcast for 2023. So what I'd like to do is to prepare you to move from 2023 into a success-filled 2024, fully focused, cleared and and gained all the insights from this 12-month journey that you've just taken. So this is a bit of a a bit of a coaching journey, I suppose, in a way, so that you can prepare yourself via the reflection, uh, the reset, and then the actions into 2024. So the first thing that you need to do, if you haven't done already, is to really reflect. When I talk to a lot of my friends and, and people that I meet and my clients in particular, most people are not stopping to appreciate the small successes along the way. And when you can appreciate those and you bring your attention to it, you actually ignite that feeling and that charge within your system emotionally, mentally, and energetically, therefore it's expansive, of success. So now is the time to do the reflection on all the little wins, the moments when you also didn't feel like doing something and you didn't, the opportunities that came, don't measure whether they're large, go from, you know, the smallest to the biggest, but take note of them all in deep sense of gratitude and appreciation and appreciation for yourself and what you have achieved and what's taken place. So all those wins, small or large, Take them into your heart and acknowledge your part in it, your success, okay? Because when you do this, you'll realize you've achieved a whole lot more than what you initially thought. That is a given, an absolute given. And then a bit of a pat on the back. And then ask yourself, what didn't I get done? Okay, now you're not allowed to bring judgment and self-criticism into this. This is about you witnessing. And it's not about what didn't get done. It's where was I coming from? Why did it not get done? Here's the thing. Asking yourself in deep honesty, deep reflection, the things I didn't get done or the outcomes I'd hoped for that didn't take place. Were these because I was living from excuses and avoidance tactics? Or was it simply that it was out of my hands and it's up to the unseen world? That the timing isn't right, that you're not yet ready for whatever it might be, you don't need to know. But just being honest with yourself, Were they excuses and avoidance tactics that stopped those outcomes? Or unforeseen circumstances, whatever it might be, but or is it simply that you need to surrender, to let go, to sit in faith and knowing that it's there, it just wasn't in your time frame. Now, they're really important to look at. And the things where you had excuses and avoidance tactics, that's okay. What did it bring you? How did it serve you? What choice could you have made differently? 
because hopefully in listening to my podcast series and listening to my guests, you're going to understand the lean in, the face, the fears. If you've got fears there holding you back or that have held you back, please go to my website, kdoran.com, download for free the five-minute process for defusing your fears and building your confidence. It is so powerful. I work with it myself. My clients have worked with it. Um, I've had this process in place for a very long time. So please do yourself that favor. So now that you've got the deep appreciation and you've ignited the successes that you've had, and now that you've looked at what didn't happen, what didn't take place, and take an ownership of what was excuses and avoidance tactics, if at all, and what was really where you just needed to let go, allow flow. You don't need to know the how, but it's still there, alive within you. Okay, remember, no judgments in this process. This is just an observation, a reflection of the journey that you have just taken. Okay. Now, what is your focus for 2024? So for a lack of a better word, we're now going to talk about goals and the goal setting. But I have a little bit of a different take on this. So there are three level goals. And the first level goal is right at that physical level. And it's unsatisfying because it's too easy to attain. Therefore, it's not really a goal. It's just something that we set up because it's like, yeah, I know I can do that. Therefore, I will feel that I have achieved, but you actually haven't because you haven't had to stretch or grow. That's a first level goal. Nothing wrong with it, but let's name it for what it is. Okay. There's no real stretch or growth. It's like I'm setting to do this because I know that I can do it. It's so easy. It's done physical level. Second level goal is you need to stretch just a little. Creates a small win. However, still really sort of holding you back from the next level goal. Nothing wrong again with second level goal. But when you're really clear on your third level goal, and we'll talk about that in a minute, it will encompass your second level goal. So yes, you need to stretch a little bit. Creates a small win. However, it's still holding you back. There's a little bit of a challenge in that. Oh, second level goal is that heart level. So you've gone from the physical level, first level goal, second level goal is the heart level. Third level goal, this is the soul goal. This comes from your soul. It is a big stretch. It's filled with incredible possibility, but only if you're prepared to play all out and do the quantum reality leap. Now, the interesting thing is the quantum leap is not so much a leap. We call it that because it feels like that. It's the quantum calling. It's all that potential, all that the soul aspires to. It's in the energy field of the conscious crafting and creating. It's got fear to it, yet an exhilaration because it's simply unfulfilled potential and possibility. That if it's come from your soul, remember soul is part of the voice of inner knowing. Inner voice of knowing is source. Power is soul. Potential is successful self. So is it really a quantum leap or is it just a a quantum expansion, an embracing. And it feels like a leap because it's got the fear to it. And the fear, remember, my friend says, you are heading in the right direction. You're just going to need to grow into the next version of yourself. And in order to do that, there will be modes of thinking to release, false stories and beliefs to release, old behaviours that no longer serve you to release. That's all. Fear is our friend. 
So what I'm going to ask you to do is tap into what is that soul level goal. Now, you probably know what your second level heart level goal is because it's the it's got a stretch to it, remember, creates a bit of a win, but it's it's not diving into the to the potential soul calling. So how do you get the soul level goal? And I have done this in a previous episode where, you know, why you don't want it to come from your head. And here's an example. A beautiful client of mine, a woman in her mid-60s, doing my first program, the, uh, the launching pad. Great program. She came in already doing another coaching program, but that was to do with video. She had left her nursing. She was aspiring to have a business dealing and helping with people with finances, but she never followed through. She always held back from doing the video, doing the posts, doing what was required to bring this business to life. Now, as she went through the program and we look at the three levels of goals in more in depth in as part of that 12-week um, program, her sole goal was very different. And the minute that she connected to her sole goal, her business changed and it was preparing those that for, you know, all the legalities, all the discussions, everything that goes with when a family member then passes over to make sure all of that is tidied up. And she was fired up by it. She was doing her post. She was doing everything required. She felt it all the way through. So she was taking action because the calling has come from the soul level. It's part of your life purpose of why you came to be here. It is your greatest calling of your potential. And therefore you lead yourself from the inside out because you aspired, inspired from the inside out. Therefore you are self-motivated from the inside out. It's so alive within you that everything within you is alive and wired for you to see the conscious creation of it in your external world. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to put your hand on your chest and put a little bit of pressure. This is the heart intelligence breathing, remember? And you're just going to breathe in. I am soul aligned. Hold that breath down at the base of the belly, the base of the spine, and saying those words to yourself, I am soul aligned. And as you drop the jaw and breathe out, you're saying those words and holding that intention, I am soul aligned. And you're going to breathe it back in again. Push that breath down to the base. I am soul aligned. Drop the jaw, breathe out. I am soul aligned, as you say that within your mind. Now do this for three to four minutes. This is going to activate the heart intelligence. It's going to connect you into the soul knowing. It's going to feed doing this for three to four minutes into the deep subconscious. So creating a new pathway, a new pattern. Also, the neural pathway within the brain, we're growing that new branch. And you also amplify by doing this heart intelligence breathing with these particular words, because you can use different words for different intentions. You activate and amplify that inner voice of knowing power and potential. You bring yourself into the now moment to the present. And then you can either take your hand off your chest or keep it on your chest and keep your eyes closed and ask, what is my vision? What is my soul vision? 
for 2024. And what you're going to do is just sit and receive because you will. You will let the vision arise from within you. You will allow the soul and the heart intelligence and that knowing power and potential to present it to you. Now, here's why you do this and do it in this way rather than you thinking about what it is, which can also be driven by old drivers, expectations uh, in the in the subconscious, false stories and beliefs. This is your soul. This is coming from your soul. And we all relate to different images, symbols, words, feelings. We all have our own internal language, if you like. So the goal may rise up from within you. It may, it may be symbolic. When I did mine for 2023, I was part of a massive river and there were other streams which brought messages to me of the things that I, my soul aspired me to create, to bring in, to craft, that joined that one big massive stream of flow and abundance. And I so related to that because I love to float in water the fact that the streams were coming in, this spoke to me at a deep, soulful, heartful, uh, cellular level. So it fired up also the certainty of that feeling. And then in that experience, I received what the soul goal was. So I could name it to claim it, which was a particular outcome that incorporated all these other streams of creation, of consciously crafting, or if you like, manifestation, to come in. So my soul goal became very, very clear, and it came to me in an unexpected way. I wasn't thinking that's how I'll visualise it. When we're in our mind and we think to visualise something You know, it would be me actually doing those things or seeing books or seeing the podcast or, you know, visualising that. He came to me in a way that fired me up at a deep symbolic language that had deep resonance, therefore deep feeling. And the feeling of it is the key. And because it came in this unexpected creative way, It was beyond a shadow of doubt that it was from my soul. Okay, so that's important. That's why I'm not asking you to visualise. I'm asking you to call up the vision. And then you will know the overlay of that big stretch filled with incredible possibility And you feel it, it feels like that big quantum expansive stretch. You feel exhilarated, but sort of a oh fearful element to it as well. You have struck your soul goal. You have the vision to keep feeding that is the symbolic language unique to you. And then I want you to write all of your insights down, this whole journey of the self-reflection of all your wins, what didn't get done, where did it come from. Write it all down. Take it from inside your head and ground it, put pen to paper. Now, you'll be very aware from this experience then what your second level goal is, but it's the third level goal that you're really going to feed continually throughout 2024 because it will encompass your second level goal. That'll just be part of it. That's just the steps from the heart that lead you to the soul. 
and then the soul leading you back through the heart process. And then create the visuals. Okay, I call this a power poster. If you'd really like to be taken through a whole workshop that I actually used to run as a day's workshop, I ran it for over 15 years. Um, and I have have now recorded uh, videos to take you through that workshop, which will take you deeper into unmasking, limiting beliefs, etc., and take you through how to do a successful power poster and life scripting, which we'll go through. You can go to my website, go under free resources, and the workshop on consciously crafting and creating your future or advanced manifestation, if you like, is called Power Up Your Life. Download it. It's free. And the workbook is there for you as well. And take yourself through the process if you so choose. but create the visual that keeps feeding back to you that you can look at, keep feeding into your subconscious, keep feeding into and firing up those cells. And then you're going to write a life script. So it's the 30th of December 2024, you're going to write it like it's a letter to somebody, DK. And you're going to write with such description and feeling your outcome, your year, as though you've already lived it. All the feeling that fires up with your visioning all the outcomes, the connections, the unfolding, the colours, the smells, the tastes, whatever it is, get very, very descriptive and detailed. And you're writing it as though you've already lived that year to a friend. It's very powerful. And you're doing everything you can then to constantly feed that by looking at the visual, by going into a meditative state, doing that breath work and coming back. And and again, each time you do this, the vision may alter slightly or it may be the same. I had my one that at one point it actually turned into that I was actually inside a massive tree and it was all the branches, which showed me that I had grown. The tree was massive. And I saw what I'd already brought into place and what was still there, but it was still very symbolic because I, I connect deeply. I am a tree hugger. The shaman in me is always hands on a tree, feeling the vibe, connecting, breathing in the energy of the trees. But it still had exactly that same premise and feeling. So the more you can fire that up. Now, here's the thing. Then you're also wanting to visit boundaries around all the different areas of your life from relationship to professional, to your spiritual, to your health and well-being, to your finances. And what are the boundaries that you're going to put around each of those areas in order for you to gain your aspired soul level goal? How much time? Each category. Clearly define those boundaries and write those down as well. Time for self. Remember health and well-being, finances, professionally, relationships, and the relationship to yourself. So you're creating a map. You're setting your intention in order for you to be successful in your outcome. And remember, there's no such thing as time. So you can gift yourself the illusion of time for the things that are most important to you. Now you're going to look at 
in particular while you're on school holidays with children perhaps, whatever it might be, it's a busy time of the year. You need to look at what your stabilizers are. And the stabilizers are the things that you love, but they keep you going. They stabilize you. So things that I have on my list that are my absolute stabilizers, I want you to pick three. Meditation for me is an absolute stabilizer. When I don't meditate, I know and feel the difference. A good quality meditation also gives you energy and can be the equivalent to good quality sleep. It keeps you plugged in to the soul level as the observer, relaxed. So many other things. Exercise is another one for me. And connection to friendships. So when things are really busy, I'm so clear on my stabilizers and I have established that when they're less busy and I've got, I've got more space in my days and weeks, then I might meditate for half an hour. But my stabilizer, when it becomes my stabilizer in amongst hectic moments means the bare minimum I will do will be five minutes because I can win at that. Because it's not how much time you give it ultimately, it's the fact that you gave that to yourself. Now, you can end up doing more than five minutes, but as as your stabilizer, it's the bare minimum. The bare minimum for me with my exercise is my two very early morning PT sessions because I've paid for them, I've got to show up for them. At other times, I will have other exercise there, power walking, whatever it might be, more time at the gym. But the stabilizer, I've got that set early in the morning, doesn't interfere with my day, doesn't rob me of any time, the illusion of time. And then it might be sending for connection, sending gifts to the people that I love. That does not take time at all, letting them know I love you, thinking of you, whatever it might be. might be a text or it might be a phone call, but it might only be one phone call in that week and it might be 10 minutes, not half an hour. I set the bare minimum. So when things are really full on and it's a really busy time, they are my three non-negotiables. So whatever they are for you, be clear on your three non-negotiables that you incorporate into your life and your year, but as stabilizers when things are full on, non-negotiable, bare minimum. I win at these. I'm honoring self and you know why they're your stabilizers because they stabilize you. So you've reflected from the year, you've got your visioning, your soul goal and your visioning for the next year. You've set up your power poster and images and things around you that keep feeding to you, into you. You've written your life script, your letter, as though you've already lived it and you want to take that out and read it and feel it. You're going to keep checking in to the visioning. You've got your boundaries set. You've got your stabilizers. And now be aware of the growth process that you have different gears that you can move through. When you first fire up with this visioning, oh my God, you will be looking at the top of that mountain with excitement. But as you start to take action and you move further along in change, it means you need to get past your current comfort zone, expanding your energy, letting go of aspects of self, in order for next version to rise up. So know that excuses, avoidance tactics will come up. It's telling you you're on the right path. So be prepared. Have your processes in place. 
do your these are my fears. Gear down if required and just take small steps if it feels overwhelming to suddenly look up at the top of the mountain. First gear is still movement, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, but so is pit stop and refuel. So be kind to yourself. Know that if you do all of these in in place and you get support and you play all out. And remember, even if you're in pit stop or first or second or third, these are different from avoidance. This is just recognizing where you are. And a lot of this is is all covered in great detail in the 12-week program. Should you choose to find out more about it, you just get in contact with me. But knowing where you are is still playing all out. Okay, so I say this to my clients. You're in first gear, you're still playing all out because you're meant to be in first gear right now. It's still movement. Playing all out 100% just means you're on the field. You don't need to be running on the field the whole time. You need to be on the field. Okay, so fifth gear is not... That's playing all out. That's playing 100%, but so is second, so is first, so is pit stop, so is refuel. You can't miss out when you're taking action, when you're tapping in and honouring self with your stabilizers and the things that keep you stable and that keep you expanded, when you stay focused, when you keep taking action, but you're also allowing the unseen world to work and weave with you. You don't need to know the how. Just keep doing what is inspired and what needs to be done. And spend the year in gratitude and appreciation of all the small things as they unfold because every time you do that, it feeds success. It feeds the success. It feeds the fact that you've got movement, that things are happening, which means they will continue to. Know that you are worthy. Surround yourself with those that feed all your potential and possibility. Keep close to your heart your soul aspiration. Do not feed it to those that are wearing different lenses. Minimise the projection of the I can't and move yourself from I can to I am. Soul level. It's already done. It's already given. You're just in the state of movement, of knowing of action, of feeling, and of outcome. And if you'd like to, on the New Year's Eve, create yourself a ceremony for the things that you're letting go of. Any love, compassion, understanding, and forgiveness that you need to give to yourself if you discovered that you had excuses and avoidance tactics, that's okay. When you recognize something and you bring it into conscious awareness, you can make more empowered choices. So however you choose to do the ceremony, do the letting go, the acknowledgement of what's been gained. And you can also ceremoniously release out. You're already successes for 2024. Thank you for journeying with me. I really appreciate your support in this podcast. I've got some great guests already lined up for 2024. If you have specific areas that you would like me to address and cover off on with all my years of experience and insight, please do. 
there's Q and A's at the bottom of a lot of the podcasts on the platforms. For example, Spotify, you can contact me directly. Um, all my social media links are on my webpage. Through these holidays, if you need be, please, there, there are free three free meditations on my website. There is the Power Up Your Life, Consciously Crafting, Creating uh, Your Future uh, called Power Up Your Life. That is a free one-day workshop for you. Or on the front of my um, website, you can download the five-minute process for defusing your fears. Have a beautiful end of 2023 and I'll see you beautiful people on the other side in the new year. Remember, the power of change is in your hands. Join me on my next episode. And if you love this podcast, please subscribe by clicking on the plus button if you're on Apple or like and follow on Spotify, rate and review. And please share in a voice of knowing with your friends.